What's up friends? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. Super excited today. I finally have my hands on the Tom Ford Soleil Defoe collection. I have both of the eyeshadow quads. I have one of the highlighters and I have one of the lip balms. We're going to be doing swatches. I've got demos and stay tuned till the end of this video because I have lots of comparisons to show you guys. So if you want to hear all of my completely honest thoughts, then keep watching. All right, party people, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. I will be linking down below a shopping guide where you can purchase all of the products that are in this collection. I know some of the items, specifically the eyeshadow quads, have been a little bit difficult to get, especially if you're in the United States. This is a very highly anticipated limited edition release from Tom Ford. So I keep that shopping guide up to date with where you can buy all of the items. And make sure you are subscribed to my channel and following me on Instagram because that's where I let you guys know where things come back in stock, where they launch, etc. And if you are new here, welcome, welcome. My name is Sophia and I'm a complete luxury beauty addict. I do a lot of reviews on Tom Ford, Dior, Chanel, Sephora brands, you name it. So if that is your jam, definitely hit that subscribe button to join our fam because I upload new videos every single week. The way that this review is going to go down, friends, is that first I'm going to cover each of the eyeshadow palettes. Then we're going to talk about the highlighter. Then we're going to talk about the lip balm. Then I will share my final thoughts about each of those products. And then at the very end, there will be a comparison section with all of the requested comparisons that you guys have asked for. Timestamps will be down below. Let's get into it. The Soleil Defoe eyeshadow quads. I have both of the shades right here, Island Haze and Tropical Dusk. It says on the website that these evoke strokes of solar light over the sea, sculpting the eyes with shimmering bronzes and ember hues. Presented in luxe limited edition Soleil Defoe packaging, these mesmerizing hues recall the molten sun descending in a burnished blaze over the sea painting the sky with strokes of solar light. So there's the fantasy from Tom Ford, guys. This is a summer collection. So we're getting these very sultry summertime hues. I'm gonna show you guys some close-ups right here. First, we have Tropical Dusk. Tropical Dusk is a quartet of smoldering bronze mattes and golden shimmers. I think a lot of people are calling this one the pink palette. It actually isn't really that pink. It has pretty much all brown tones that are quite neutral, which I know a lot of you guys like. And then it does have one soft pink matte, but it doesn't pull super pink. Then we have Island Haze. Island Haze sculpts and defines eyes with the fiery ember hues of a blazing sunset. So this one is significantly warmer. We've got some burnished reds. We have a bright gold topper shade. This one is going to be your warmer toned option. As I said in the description, these do have this beautiful limited edition packaging. I actually really like this. I think it's so beautiful. I love the tone of it. The packaging, like the feel of it, the makeup of it is exactly the same as any other Tom Ford eyeshadow. It is a little bit plasticky, but I like the weighty feel of these. And I like the fact that at least these kind of look like metal. And real quick, before I get into the demos, friends, just to give you a lay of the land in terms of the different finishes that you get here, each of these palettes has two matte shades. So we have these two here and these two here. The matte shades, they have a very powdery, finely milled, kind of drier texture. I did take a look at the ingredients and it's a mixture of talc, cornstarch, and kaolin clay. So I think that because they're using that cornstarch and kaolin clay, it's giving that sort of more finely milled texture, but you'll see how it applies in the demo. In addition, each of these also has a kind of like more buttery, more silky shimmer shade. It's this one in this palette and then this one in this palette. Trust me, this is going to help when you when you watch the demo. And then each of these also has a shimmery topper shade, which would be this one in this palette and this one in this palette. So you get a little bit of glitter and shine. Those shades do not have a ton of opacity. And so you're going to see me using those as topper shades in the demo. And with that, friends, let's get into the demos. I'm going to start off first with a look that I created with Tropical Dusk. I feel like this is the palette that more of you guys are interested in. So first off, I started off with that soft pink shade in the crease. I know I told you guys that these mattes, they have a little bit of like a drier texture, but you know what? I think they actually apply really beautifully. I had absolutely no problem blending this into the crease. I saw no patchiness. It didn't cling to the concealer that I used to prep on my lids. I thought it was a really beautiful, soft, wearable shade. Next up, I went into the shimmery nude shade. This is going to be your perfect all over the lid color since the other shade in the palette that has some shimmer is more of a topper. I spread this all over the 
lid. It's super soft. It's very satiny. It has a little bit more kick to it than maybe like a Dior satin, for example. Next up, I went back into the Shimmery Nude Shade and I applied that to the inner corner and also along the lower lash line. Once again, because this has such a soft touch to it, I think it's really nice for applying to the lower lash line because you don't have to really like tug and pull to spread it. Next up, I dipped into the Cocoa Brown Matte and I brushed that into the outer corner of the eye. Just like the soft pink shade, I felt like this was very easy to blend. And then what I did next is I went into that shimmery topper shade and I layered that on top of the lid using the little applicator that comes with the palette. I think these little spongy applicators are really good for kind of getting in the inner corner, the lower lash line, and especially when you have a topper shade like this. I felt like I didn't get any fallout when I used the little applicator. Next, I went back into the soft pink shade because I felt like I kind of lost that a little bit as I was doing the look. And I used that to blend around the edges to create that kind of really soft, hazy, diffuse type of color. And to just, once again, like add a little bit more pink back into the look. And then the final thing that I did, friends, is I went in with my Victoria Beckham Beauty Satin Eye Casual in the shade Copper. I did a winged look and then I used the Cocoa Brown shade in the palette to blend that wing out, just to kind of soften up the eyeliner. I think that shade Copper goes really well with this palette. I will link it down below. I love those eyeliners. And then finally, friends, I popped on some mascara and this is the final look. Comment down below and let me know what you think about this look with Tropical Dusk. I was pretty obsessed with this look, not gonna lie. I absolutely love the way that it came out. It is very neutral, but I love how soft it is while also being a little bit sparkly because you guys know I like my sparkle. And next up, we have our look with Island Haze. First, I started off with that soft brown and popped that into the crease. I do want to warn you guys, this shade is very light. It's kind of maybe like a shade or two darker than my skin tone. If you are tanner, I don't think this is going to work as a transition shade. Next up, I went into the shimmer shade just like I did with the last look, which is that deeper kind of like reddish copper shade and I applied that all over the lid. I feel like this applies well just like the other palette, but it is a much deeper color. So kind of keep that in mind, friends. This deeper color is gonna be your main shimmer in the palette. So your look is going to be very predominantly copper leaning. Next up, I went back into the light brown and also the copper shades. And I just blended that along the lower lash line to kind of match what I did to the top, also to the bottom. Then I went into the burnt orange matte. And just like the last look, you'll see, I have kind of like a formula here, how I like to test the palettes. I blended that out onto the outer lid. I thought it blended very, very easily. It is kind of a similar shade to the shimmer shade, however, so you're not gonna get maybe as much contrast as you did with the other palette. Then I went into the gold topper shade and using the little applicator, I layered that on top of the look. I do like how in this palette, the gold topper shade, it has such a nice contrast, kind of a juxtaposition to the rest of the shades in the palette. So if you layer it on top of any of them, it really does add like more dimension to the look. Then I went back into the light brown and I used that to blend all around the edges. I also wanted to show you guys, I did try and see if I could build up that darker matte shade with a denser brush. You definitely can build it up a little bit. I think you can, but only so much, especially because it's kind of like a similar shade, like I said, to that other shimmer that's in the palette. But I wanted to show you just in case you maybe wanted to create something that is smokier. Finally, I applied a brown eyeliner. I'll link what I used down below, some mascara, and this is the final look with Island Haze. Comment down below. Let me know how you guys think I did with Island Haze. Let me know which of the looks you prefer. I think this came out really beautiful as well. I didn't have any issues with any of the formulas of any of the shades. And yeah, comment down below. Let me know which one you liked better. Next up, friends, I have the Soleil de Faux Glow Highlighter. This is retailing for $95. This does come in two shades. And the one that I picked up is number 02 Oasis. This is described as a shimmering neutral bronze. There there is one more shade in this collection which is called Mirage and that is described as a radiant warm gold. I'll put up a photo so that you guys can see what that one looks like. This one Mirage, I do think that the description is true. 
it's kind of like a mid-tone bronze. It's not going to be as yellow gold as Mirage and that's why I went with this one because I'm just very pale. I think that if you have a golden undertone and if you are tanner, maybe like tan to medium to deep, you might want to check out Mirage because it's going to give you that really like bold, rich yellow gold type of impact. If you are paler, then you might want to go with the one that I went with. Now you guys will see in the swatches, this is a little bit on the darker side. This isn't going to be like a shimmering light champagne highlighter. This does have a little bit of pigment to it. And you'll see in the demo as well, it just barely kind of works for my skin tone without leaving too much pigment. It gives a little bit of like bronze to my cheeks. Some people were asking me if you could use this as a bronzer. I don't recommend doing that if you're very fair. Maybe it'll look kind of like a super glowy bronzer, but these are very high shine. It's that super finely milled, high shine, sleek sort of formula that we always get from Tom Ford highlighters. It's absolutely beautiful. But if you're worried about this maybe being a little bit too dark for you, I think that maybe I would skip this collection because this one does add a little bit of pigment to the cheeks, but I love it layered over bronzer or maybe like a, you know, toasty type of blush. There's a lot of bright blushes that have been coming out lately, especially if you pick one up in kind of like a brown or maybe like a reddish tone. I think this would look really pretty layered on over top. It is a very similar formula from what we get from a lot of other Tom Ford highlighters. It's not too glittery, but it has just enough impact. It's really, really lovely. I don't have really any complaints about it. I think it's really nice. It also comes in the beautiful limited edition packaging, which I know is covered with all of my fingerprints, but I really like that as well. I'm gonna share a little bit more in my final thoughts about whether I think it's worth it. We'll do some comparisons in just a second. I do wanna talk about also, lastly, the lip balm. This is the Soleil de Faux Spark Lip Balm. And these were very controversial. We did talk about these in one of my recent makeup hauls. I did a demo for you guys, shared some first impressions. These also, of course, come in the limited edition packaging. I specifically like it when lipsticks come in limited edition packaging because I get to carry this around with me in my purse and I also feel like these components they feel more metally they feel a little bit more substantial so I'm kind of a sucker for the limited edition packaging when it comes to the lipsticks this comes in two shades so the one that I have this is called sun spark and this is described as a rosy pink with shimmering pearl overspray. There's another lighter color. I'll show you guys a photo right here, which is called Sunlight. That is described as a nude with shimmering pearl overspray. I'm reading this off of Sephora. Now I'll show you guys some close-ups of this before I applied it to my lips. This is what it looked like when I first bought it. You guys will notice the outside of it has that shimmering pearl overspray. It's magnificent. It looks like glitter. I don't even know, guys. It looks so, so beautiful. And when you take a look at the promo photos of the models, which I'll also show you right here, they have shimmering plump lips, okay? So everybody was expecting that. But as some of you may have heard in my last video when we chatted about this, this is just an overspray. It's pretty much just Sephora also that says that it's an overspray. So I'm glad that they're, I'm glad that they're putting that out there in the description, which is good. But I still think that the marketing of this is incredibly misleading. And unfortunately, the reviews on Sephora are absolute trash. Everybody's very upset about these lip balms. You guys will see in the swatches and the demos, these are not shimmery at all. It's just an overspray. These very much function like tinted lip balms. I've heard that the lighter color is not so great. Some people feel like it gives them concealer lips. Some of you have commented in my videos and you've said that you have that shade and you absolutely like it. But just be mindful, friends. These are not shimmery. They're not anything like super duper special. It says that they give a plump look, but they don't have any kind of plumping technology or plumping formulation. There's no tingling. There's no stinging. There's no minty flavor. If anything, these have a vanilla scent to them that I actually quite enjoy. They don't give a ton of pigment. They give just kind of like a tint to the lips. It's not too shiny. It's not too matte. It does feel like a lip balm and it is very moisturizing. It's kind of like my perfect everyday 
I don't have a mirror, I'm on the go, I'm gonna keep this in my purse type of nude. And I have been using it a lot lately. And I get a lot of use out of it, but I wanna warn you guys, these aren't anything super unique. And also, these retail for $60. They are so, so expensive. So I'll share some more thoughts in my final thoughts, friends. But I just wanted to put that out there, show you guys the swatch, show you the demo, and just give you fair warning that these are not shimmery, they're not plumping, they're very much just tinted lip balms. All right, friends, time for my final thoughts. I will let you know what I think of each of the eyeshadow palettes, the highlighter, the lip balm, then we will do some comparisons at the end because I do have some more thoughts about that. So let's start off with the formula of the eyeshadow palettes. When I first swatched these, I was a little bit concerned because I could instantly tell that the mattes had that cornstarch type of formulation. They also have talc, by the way. It's not like these are clean beauty. These didn't get reformulated or anything like that, but it felt like very dry and powdery, kind of like the new Dior eyeshadows. But you know what? I was pleasantly surprised when I applied them to the eye. I thought that they blended out beautifully. I didn't have any issues with any of the shades in either palette. I really liked it. And I really like, you know, I told you during the demo, the silkiness and the softness of the shimmer shade that comes in each palette. I do kind of wish that it's only a, it's only a quad, right? You're only getting four, but sometimes, you know, I do wish that I had one more shimmer shade. I wish it was a quint, but you know what? We can't have everything. You only get four shades in these Tom Ford palettes. But overall, I really, really like the formula. Now let's talk about each of the color stories. I like this one better. This one is Tropical Dusk. You might have thought that I would have liked Island Haze better because I am a warm toned gal. And a lot of times I'm like, oh, the pink palette, it's so boring, blah, blah, blah. I, no, this is beautiful. This is a beautiful palette. I was obsessed with the look that I created yesterday when I was playing with this palette. I was taking so many photos for Instagram. I think it looked absolutely stunning. Is it very neutral? Yes. Is it pretty dupable? Yes. So I think you need to ask yourself, do you need another neutral palette? This isn't really a pink palette because the main shades in the palette are all brown. They're all neutral. And then you get this one shade just to kind of create, you know, a little something extra. It adds a little bit of pinkness to it, but this is not super bright, right? Like that's a very nude pink. It's not going to really pop as pink on any skin tone. So if you were thinking of it being a pink palette, I wouldn't really think of it in that way. It's more of like a soft, hazy, neutral palette with a little bit of like a pinky undertone if you were to use that matte. Now, something that I think you need to take into consideration is the fact that the topper shade here, it is darker. And so I like it, but if you're somebody that likes a very bright, illuminating topper shade, this probably isn't going to be for you. Once again, you really only have this shade right here, which is kind of like a mid-tone sandy brown to give you that all-over shimmer. You don't get like a ton of pigmentation from the topper shades. See that? They're very transparent. They're not very opaque. They're not going to give you a ton of color. So I think you just need to keep that in mind, you know, if you're okay with this breakdown of formulas. But I think that this color story is so, so beautiful. We'll talk a little bit more, you know, in the comparisons about what this is similar to and what I like better. But in general, I really like this palette. I thought it was so beautiful. Now let's talk about Island Haze. I think that this is a good palette, but it's not my favorite. And I'll explain why. First off, this shade right here is very light. I feel like they should have made it a little bit darker, especially so it could suit more skin tones. Even on me, it's a very light shade. I like a good blending shade, but not if I'm paying $90 for only four shades. I want every shade to count. We've talked about this before with Tom Ford. Like if one shade isn't exactly what I want it to be, it's not really worth the $90 price tag, right friends? And then in addition to that, I would have liked to have seen these two shades to be a little bit more different because I feel like no matter what you do, every single look is going to look like this. It's going to look like this RNG copper tone. If you don't like that, then there's like really no point in getting this palette. I feel like there's just not really as much versatility. The 
all over shimmer shade is quite dark so this is naturally going to be a darker look and I mean I guess you could just put this all over the eye and then top this on top but like I don't know I wouldn't do that it's not really my jam I like to have a true shimmer shade all over the eye so the formulas are great they're great it's just this particular color story there's too many downsides for me to say that this is worth the $90 price tag the Soleil Defoe glow highlighter I really like this I've been using it a lot I do think it's a little bit overpriced and I think you need to be careful if you're super fair because this might be a little dark for you but it's such a nice shade especially if you want kind of like that tan goddess look after i did that first impressions video some of you guys were asking me if this was similar to any of those highlighter duos that they released maybe like a couple of months ago i don't have any of those but it does look like this shade is different than anything that you can get from that lineup the only thing friends is I was thinking about this like those are $90 and you get two shades you get double the product and double the colors and this is $95 and it's like you only get one so it's a little bit of a ripoff I almost would recommend that you just get one of those duos if you're really really interested in having a Tom Ford highlighter maybe you want the limited edition packaging maybe you already have those and you want to indulge in you know, something that's like a little bit different. I totally get it. But if I were you friends, I would just get double the product, double the shades for the same price. The lip balm. I like it. I do. <laughs> I don't think that it was worth it. I don't think I can actually ethically recommend this to you because it's a $60 nude lip balm. But do I like it now that I paid for it for this review? I do. I keep this in my purse and I use it all the time. I love the packaging. I love the color. This is just kind of like my perfect slap it on nude. It's not sparkly. It's not really that special. It is super hydrating though. It really clings to the lips and leaves them buttery soft. Like I love this lip balm, but it's not really worth it friends. It's incredibly overpriced. And if you were looking for something that was shimmery and glittery, just like the overspray, you're not gonna get that. I mentioned in my other video, if you do want something that is what you thought this was going to be, the Isamea lipsticks are great. I think the color is called Bluff, if I'm not mistaken. I'm going to link it down below. That has kind of a similar tone to this, but gives you that beautiful multi-dimensional sparkle. I do have a demo and a review of all the lipsticks that she launched in that collection. Those are really cool. Those are really cool. And I'm pretty sure that they're cheaper. I'm almost certain that they are cheaper. Also the Merit Lightweight Lipsticks. Those are really good. Those come in a variety of shades and it's a very similar formula. The packaging is really beautiful. They're much more affordable. So what I would say, friends, if you want something that's equally as luxurious but is more sparkly, go with the Isamea. If you want something that is like way more affordable but basically the same thing, go with the ones from Merit. I will link them all down below. Time for comparisons, friends. I am going to start off with the highlighter in the shade Oasis. I have a lot of comparisons here for you all. So here is the new one from Tom Ford. Here is that new Chantecai Cosmos collection one. It is called Stella. And then right here, hopefully you guys can see the two shades. This is that Tom Ford highlighter that everybody loves in Reflex Guilt. So we've got the lighter shade, the darker shade. Then I swirled them together and got this. And it's like legit almost the same maybe a little bit pinkier. This right here is the Dior Luminizer in the shade 04 Golden Glow. So see how it's going to be a lot lighter. Something like that and the Chantecaille are going to be perfect if you are fair and maybe a little bit concerned that the Tom Ford one is too dark. Then right here we have Westman Atelier Peau de Peche. I know it's a cream formula, but it's pretty similar. It's a little bit peachier as opposed to the bronze in the Tom Ford. And then right here, I have Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk 2, the Beauty Light Wand. It's a little bit more like a blush. That's how I use it. So I would say the closest ones here are probably the Reflex Guilt, to be honest, the one from Tom Ford. So if you have that one, you don't need the new one from this collection. That's for sure. You knew this next one was coming. Don't worry, friends. Don't worry. I got you. I got you. Okay, right here, we've got Tropical Dusk and Hazy Sensuality. Now, Hazy Sensuality, this was recently launched. It's very popular, but this is permanent, okay? This is not going anywhere, so I've heard, but they have kind of like similar vibes. Let me show you 
the swatch comparisons that I have here on my hand. So right here, we've got Tropical Dusk, and right here we have Hazy Sensuality. Tropical Dusk is gonna be the one that you wanna go for. If you want something that's like a little bit more tan and like sexy for summer, you're also getting more of like a juxtaposition of shades. You can create a lot more depth because you're getting a true matte, especially with this chocolate brown. I also think that with Hazy Sensuality, a lot of times it ends up being more pink because I don't know if you guys can tell here, but especially when these apply to the eye, this shade just pops a lot more, but you're also getting lighter shades in this palette that create a lot of like brightness and illumination. They're really good companion palettes, definitely. But I think between the two, just personally, I like Tropical Dusk a little bit more because it's just, it leans more neutral, leans more brown. Those are the types of colors I like. I like golds. I think that this is nice, more so kind of like as a spring palette. And then this is what I would go for for summer. They're both great. They both have really nice formulas. It just depends, like, do you want this wet dry formula that I think this is a little bit maybe more friendly for mature eyes. All the colors kind of blend together very seamlessly in kind of an airbrushed way. They kind of blend themselves. If you're someone that likes to create something with like more depth and a little bit more dimension and more careful placement of the colors, then I think this more standard palette with the shimmer, the mattes, and the topper shade is gonna be better for you. So I don't really think that you need both friends, but I don't know, I like the limited edition one a little bit more. If you really can't choose between them, maybe go for Tropical Dust because it is limited edition, and maybe like a year or two from now, you can always go and get Hazy Sensuality at another time. Now let's take a look at Island Haze with some of the other recently released palettes. Here I have Golden Hour. Now, once again, this is in the wet dry formula. Golden Hour has more of like a pinky undertone to it. I like this palette a lot more. I think it's a little bit more interesting because you get a gold, you get kind of like a light peachy pink, and then you get these other two deeper shades that add, you know, a little bit more sultriness to the look. Whereas this one, like I said, it's always gonna come out kind of coppery. I'll show you guys a quick swatch comparison. So here is the new palette and then here is Golden Hour. Hopefully you guys can see how it's just a lot lighter in nature and it has more of like a pinky tone to it. Now I also wanna show you guys Peach Dawn. I feel like these are a little bit more similar. I don't know why Tom Ford's releasing all of these super similar palettes. I still like this one better. Like I said, this one's kind of my least favorite out of all of these new ones that have been released. If you like this color story and you kind of were going for this, I would go for Peach Dawn. I also swatched this one right here on my hand. And so if I step back, you can kind of tell the color story is rather similar. I do think that this one is just a little bit lighter, brighter, fresher. I love the more peachy tone as opposed to the coppery tone. I do have, by the way, a full review of all these three new palettes that I can link down below with demos, swatches, everything. So you can check that out. So you can see what does that full end look look like when you get it on the eyes because that's really what's important here friends the time has come friends we're also going to be comparing forbidden pink this is a new recent palette with tropical dust these are super similar now this is in the sort of i guess you could call it regular formula it is a little bit drier but very blendable and then this is in the creme formula which has a nice creamy feel to it i don't think that the longevity is as good with the cream formula, but I still really like it. I like the look that it gives to the eye. This is Tropical Dusk, and then this is Forbidden Pink. They're pretty similar. They're pretty similar. Tropical Dusk, it leans more, well, it leans more brown because it doesn't have the rosy undertones that you get from Forbidden Pink. Forbidden Pink is a neutral palette. It's basically like browns, but with a rosy undertone because it's a part of the Rose Prick collection. And then this has a much softer look and feel to it. See these more diffuse swatches. Which one do I like more? It's tough because they are pretty similar. I, I think I like the Tropical Dusk better, honestly. Like I liked 
how much sparkle I got from that. Not saying I don't still love Forbidden Pink, I absolutely do, but I think that I would probably go for that as like a nighttime palette because it's a little bit more sultry and romantic. And then I would go for Tropical Dusk maybe for more of like a day or day to night type of look. I kind of think that Tropical Dusk is almost like a cross between Hazy Sensuality and the Tom Ford Forbidden Pink. So if you couldn't decide between all of these friends, maybe go with this one. I have reviewed on my channel, I think almost every single new Tom Ford quad that has come out so far this year. I think except Cherry Smoke, I think that might've been the only one that I didn't pick up. If I were to rank all of them, and this is just in terms of what personally brings me joy, none of these are honestly super bad. I would probably put this one, unfortunately, at the bottom, Island Haze. Then I think I would put Electric Cherry just because I don't wear that color story as often. Then I would put Hazy Sensuality because once again, I think it's like pretty dupable and I don't know, it's just not as interesting and vibrant for me. Then I would put Golden Hour right in the middle. Then I would put Forbidden Pink. Then I would put Peach Dawn because I just personally really like that color story on my skin tone and it's very bright and happy. And then finally, I would probably put this one, Tropical Dusk. So it's interesting. I would put each of these new palettes on either end of that ranking. And I think they're all really good palettes, but I think you just need to ask yourself what formula you like the best and then what colors are going to suit you best. Maybe something you don't already have in your collection. What else? We're not done. We're not done. Okay, you guys requested a lot of comparisons. Right here I have First Frost. This was limited edition. This was part of, I think, the Soleil Neige collection like a couple of years ago. It was super popular. So I'm going to be comparing that here with Tropical Dust. I would say, well, first off, this is in the wet dry formula and it's almost like the frosty wintertime cousin of Tropical Dust. I'll show you guys here the swatch comparison. So Tropical Dust, First Frost. I mean, if you like first frost, you might like this as kind of like your summertime palette. And then you could use this one as more of like maybe a spring and winter. So there's definitely some similarities there, but the formula is different. I also received some requests to compare this up against Metal Lust. Metal Lust is a little bit more cool tone. And then Tropical Dusk is, I would say it's neutral. This one is more cool leaning and it doesn't have that pink shade to it but I also just wanted to show you guys I swatched it here on my finger the metal lust shadow it's very molten and metallic and it's also opaque whereas here tropical dusk this is once again more of a topper shade it's not going to be as pigmented so they really are not that similar I think it's different formula and different color scheme if you're looking at tropical dusk and you're thinking that you want something that is a little bit more pink the best option honestly is just the Charlotte Tilbury pillow talk dreams the formula is different it's a little bit more kind of pigmented and buttery and high shine metallic but you'll see here they're not that different I have them swatched on my hand right here so we got tropical dusk pillow talk dreams see how this it just has more of like that warm, rosy, pinky tone. And then Tropical Dusk, it's just like a nice, light, neutral undertone. It's going to give me more of that summery vibes. And this one is like a little bit more romantic. The standard Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk palette is going to be a little bit lighter. It doesn't have the deeper shades that you get here. So if you're looking at this palette and you really like the lighter two shades, you know, the Pillow Talk palette is a really good option because those shades, look how similar they are, but you're not getting like that deep cocoa brown. So you really don't get much depth from this palette at all. It's okay. I prefer Pillow Talk Dreams a little bit better. If you liked this color story, but you want something that's quite frankly better, the Dior palette in Bay Adair, this is from their summer collection last year, is very similar vibes and you get one more color. I just think the range of shades and the formula in this one is better. I know this was limited edition, but I'm pretty sure I saw this still available somewhere. So I'm gonna try and find it. And if I can find it, friends, I will link it down below. Some of you wanted to see some side-by-sides of the new YSL palettes and these new Tom Ford palettes. This is Babylon Roses, and that is up against the Tropical Dusk. Honestly, I think they're pretty different. 
the Babylon Roses. This is super sparkly and shimmery, but in like a pink kind of way. It leans much more purpley and mauvey, and this one's more neutral. And then here is Fontina Lilies. There's some similarities between this one. I think that Tropical Dusk is a lot more interesting than this one. This is a little bit more like the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk palettes. I have a lot of comparisons in the review that I did of these. I also have here from YSL Casbah Spices. Casbah Spices is gonna be much more of like that neutral to warm leaning browns. It doesn't have that same like reddish and super golden character that you get here from Island Haze. Couple more friends right here. I have the recently released Byredo Remembrance palette. I know a lot of you guys picked this up. So I wanna show you this actually can kind of cover shades from both of the palettes. So you do have kind of like those pinky tones and the soft nudes for sure. And then you also get some of those like burnished orangey copper shades. So if you have this palette, you definitely don't need either of the ones from Tom Ford. This formula, fantastic. I'll link my review down below. If you're looking for value and something that could create a lot of different looks with similar shades, this is a great option. Another reason why I wasn't that impressed by this palette is because I know that I could always use one of my favorite palettes of all time, the Viseart Mink Set Palette, and get a very similar look. Like you can pretty much dupe every single shade with this palette, except this is maybe a little bit more yellow gold than this shade, but this is so, so good. It's a really great value. And yeah, Viseart has sales all the time as well, but I would 100% buy this full price. Last couple here, we have Patch McGrath Divine Rose up against Tropical Dust. These aren't exact dupes, but it is very much the same vibe. You know, I know a lot of people have this palette and I know that this palette is more expensive, but technically it is a better value and Pat McGrath has sales all the time. So I just wanted to remind you guys very quickly that this, it's a similar color story. I also have here the Natasha Denona Mini Biba palette, which I think also gives very similar vibes. I don't have time to do individual swatches of all these because my hands will be rubbed raw, but I do just want to give you guys some inspiration here. I have a review of a lot of these palettes on my channel, so you can check my channel page. But I mean, look at that. Look at that. That can give you a very, very similar look. And I think that these are like between 25 and 30 bucks. Someone also brought up this palette, which is the Natasha Denona Glam Face Palette. This came out maybe like two holidays ago. I think it's a very good suggestion to compare these. However, you don't really get the pinky tones in this one. It's more of just straight up neutrals, which is why I suggested the Mini Biba palette because that one is a little bit more on like the rosy pink side. And finally, we have the Natasha Denona My Dream palette. This has a lot of similar shades as well. It's a little bit more warm leaning. Some of the shades are a little bit more interesting because you got like some soft duo chromes and that kind of stuff in there. But if you have this palette, you could probably dupe some of the vibes as well. So. That's all I have for comparisons. I know that was a lot, but a lot of people were asking for me to compare both of these palettes. And you know what? I get questions all the time like, is it worth it if I can buy something like this Natasha Denona palette for, what are these now, like $65 to $70? People ask me if the Tom Ford palettes are a ripoff. And I mean, I guess they are. I guess they are by definition kind of a ripoff because you are 100% paying a premium. You are 100% paying for like a luxury product with a luxury name. But that being said, I mean, I guess you could say then that like my Dior handbag is a ripoff as well. Like I just like luxury products. And I think at the end of the day, if you enjoy the formula, if the formula is good, if you like those colors, you like the experience, you like the packaging, and you just get joy from using it, then for me, it's totally worth it. I really like all of my bigger palettes like this and also all of my Tom Ford palettes, but if this isn't within your budget, check out some of these alternatives that I showed you here in the comparisons. Because yes, by definition, the Tom Ford palettes, they are ripoffs. Like they're incredibly, incredibly overpriced and they really, 
they don't go on sale that much. You can get them on eBay sometimes, some of like the older palettes that have come out. When it comes to these limited edition ones, like you're probably not gonna find them on sale. So if you like any of the products that I reviewed for you here in this video, friends, I would probably pick them up sooner rather than later. I really enjoy all of them, but I think it's up to you to decide whether or not they are worth it. All right, friends, that's all I got for you today. I hope that you enjoyed this review and found it helpful. If you liked it, please don't forget to hit me up with a big thumbs up. I would very much appreciate that. I'll link all these products in the description box down below as long as they all fit. And now it is your turn, friends. Sound off in those comments down below and let me know what you think of this collection. Did you order any of these products? What has your experience been? Help us out. And did I sway you either way? Do you think that you're going to get these now or maybe not? I would love to know all of your thoughts. If you are new here, consider subscribing to my channel or head over to my channel page to watch more videos just like this. And with that, friends, I hope you see some beauty in your day and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye.